Hello and welcome to Young Adults and Youth Sunday School lesson number 34. The topic is intrapreneurship. Intrapreneurship. This is different from entrepreneurship because intrapreneurship is concerned with entrepreneurship within an organization. An entrepreneur is still working within an organization, is an employee, but is exercising entrepreneurial skills and abilities to benefit that organization and also gain some valuable lessons in preparation for his stepping out to become an entrepreneur. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we commit ourselves unto you for this lesson. We pray that you will teach us and help us to gain valuable insights from this lesson and apply to our lives for the benefit of our future endeavors so that we can fulfill destiny and dominate our world. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, text is taken from the book of Genesis chapter 30 verses 25 to 34. Genesis 30 25 to 34 and we'll be looking at Jacob. Jacob was a classical example of an intrapreneur. Genesis 30 from verse 25. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said to Laban, send me away that I may go to my own place and to my country. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served you and let me go, for you know my service which I have done for you. And Laban said to him, Please stay, if I have found favor in your eyes, for I have learned by experience that the Lord has blessed me for your sake. Then he said, Name your wages, and I will give it. And I will give it. So Jacob said to him, You know how I have served you, and how your livestock has been with me. For what you have had before I came was little, and it has increased to a great amount. The Lord has blessed you since my coming, and now when shall I provide for my own house? So he said, What shall I give you? And Jacob said, You shall not give me anything. If you will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep your flocks. Let me pass through all your flocks today, removing from there all the speckled and spotted sheep, and all the brown ones among the lambs, and the spotted and speckled among the goats, and these shall be my wages. So my righteousness will answer for me in time to come, when the subject of my wages comes before you. Everything that is not speckled or spotted among the goats and brown among the lambs will be considered stolen, if it is with me. And Laban said, Oh, that it were according to your word. So we see this negotiation between Jacob and Laban. Jacob had been serving Laban for a number of years, you know, in exchange for the two women, Rachel and Leah. And after a while, just like most young people will say, look, I have worked for this employer for so long. I want to go and set up on my own. So Jacob too was ready to go and start his own life, to go and prepare for his own family. And, you know, he asked permission from Laban, who also happened to be his father-in-law. And they, you know, the father-in-law knew, Laban knew that Jacob had some great skills. And those skills had brought blessings to him. So you too might have great skills that you know are benefiting your employer. And they got into a negotiation on how Jacob would be compensated for the work that he did for his father-in-law. And if you read further, you will see that at the end of the day, Jacob prospered much more than his employer, much more than his father-in-law. And so I want us to pay special attention to this and see the approach that Jacob took. He didn't just up and leave, he actually had a discussion about his role in the organization and his compensation. And that le learning, that lesson that he learned from there benefited him for the future. Our memory verse is taken from Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 3. Nehemiah 6 verse 3. And it says, So I sent messengers to, send to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease while I leave it and go down to you? That was Nehemiah responding to his... Um, who also wanted to slow him down. He said, look, I'm busy. I'm, I'm getting work done. You too should be busy. And that busyness can be turned to profits, to advantage for you in future. In the New Living Translation, it says, so I replied by sending this message to them. I am engaged in a great work, so I can't come. Why should I stop working to come and meet with you? Nehemiah was not idle, and we too should not be idle. Whatever you're doing, whatever the task that you have, do it heartily, even if it's one employer you might actually find that you are developing entrepreneurial skills while working diligently for that employer. And as time goes on, you can actually pull out on good terms 
and go and set up your own organization and become an entre, enter, entrepreneur. So it's a stepping stone to entrepreneurship. We've discussed before we said an entrepreneur is someone who works within an organization, within an established organization, or is doing creative work while not taking any of the risks that an entrepreneur would take. Our lesson today is divided into two segments. Lesson outline one talks about description of an entrepreneur, and lesson two talks about characteristics and benefits of entrepreneurship. Description of an entrepreneur. So who is an entrepreneur? An entrepreneur is an employee within a company who is assigned to do special work. Usually it's not routine work. You're probably heading a project of starting a new division or a new brand. You're bringing new things to, to bear. So an entrepreneur is an employee. He's within an organization, but he's doing unique and special work. So don't look down on that project you've been assigned to. Don't someone say, oh, we need to develop a new product. We need to recreate our brand. We need to introduce new things to come into the market. Seize that opportunity. Work it diligently. You might actually be honing your entrepreneurial skills and preparing yourself for life in the future. Entrepreneurs don't need to go and look for resources because you're already within an organization. You don't need to worry about money. You don't need to worry about land. You don't need to worry about employees. There are already employees in that organization. A lot of times when you're heading such special projects, you'll be able to select from among your co-workers those that you want to work with you. But you don't have to worry about hiring them, about paying them. They're already paid by the organization. You don't have to worry about capital to start your own business. Your organization is backing you up to try out, to you know, proceed with that new idea. You are inside, you're an entrepreneur is actually an outside entrepreneur who is actually still within. You're, you're like... Um, you're like, like an entrepreneur, but you are still within the covering of an entrepreneur of, a, of an organization. So the skills that you will need as an entrepreneur are the same skills you will need as an entrepreneur. You need to be creative. You need to think outside the box. You need to be bold. You need to be audacious. You need to believe in yourself. You need to be equipped. You need to have the skills necessary to succeed in managing that venture, that division that has been given to you, that project that you've been given. You need to have all that it takes to run it successfully. But the key is that you have the protection of a big organization with you. And it's as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, it's the organization that has taken all the risk. If that project fails, the entire organization doesn't fail. You might need to tweak a few things to go at it again. Unlike if you're on your own, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, having a, uh, a project fail could mean the end of your dream. But within a, a bigger organization, it's just a temporary setback. They can, especially if they believe in your vision, if they believe in your project, they will fund it again and maybe make some adjustments to that. So we, an, an entrepreneur is not the typical employee. It's not just the run-of-the-mill person doing day-to-day -day routine work. There's something you have distinguished yourself in a way that makes your employer trust you with great responsibilities. Your employer trusts you with birthing new ideas, new products, new services. And because you're going to run with it and make you know, good success out of it, you are given almost a total free hand. You can run the department, run the unit as you like. As long as, you know, at the end of the day, you succeed and you bring great profit to the organization, they're going to back you all the way. So that's what an entrepreneur is. Who is the Christian entrepreneur? The difference is that the Christian entrepreneur is honest, is proactive, He's not going to try and cheat his employer. He's not going to use his employer's resources for a business that the employer does not know about. So, you know, maybe you're working in, a, in, a, in an organization that does printing. You're learning, they've given you, maybe they're going to buy some new machines and you've been the one, in, you've been charged with learning how that machine operates and testing it out. Don't use it for a business that your organization does not know about. So a Christian entrepreneur, entrepreneur will not cheat, will not misuse resources, will be self-motivated, proactive, result-oriented, will be a believer. He will act in a way that people will say, this is, the, this is the child of God. His light will shine. The whole world will know that he is honest. He is to be 
trusted. You, you still show the traits of Christ, even as you are running that little unit, that project that has been assigned to you. Like I said, what are the differences between an intrapreneur and an entrepreneur? The, the entrepreneur is totally on his own. He's, a, he's, he's running a startup, he's running a new business, and all the risks are on him. He needs to find all the factors of production, the land, the, um, the labor, the, the, the entrepreneurial spirit, the capital. He needs to fund all that. He needs to go and look for everything. Unlike an entrepreneur, he doesn't need to look for those factors of production. They are already available in the organization. He doesn't need to go look for capital and he's not taking any risk. An entrepreneur, like we said, works for an existing organization while the entrepreneur works for himself. And he's the one, you know, trying to birth his business ideas, he's funding his business ideas. There's, you know, both can lead to great success, but entrepreneurship is probably a longer route. It allows you to learn on the job, learn using other people's resources, learn while still having the cover of a bigger organization on you without worrying about where to find capital, where to find employees, where to find land and equipment. They are already provided by that organization. So that's the description of an intrapreneur. You are an entrepreneur, but still working within an organization, an internal entrepreneur. You are using the same skills that you would have used outside, but you're not taking any risk and you're not um, bothered, you're not running after factors of production. You're not doing your own marketing, for instance. You're not going to look for loans from banks or from individuals. You're not looking for investors because those things are provided by your organization. But you're applying the same skills, the same mindset, the same go-getting uh, mindset you're applying to that project that you have been assigned within your organization. Now, the second outline says, what are the characteristics and benefits of entrepreneurship what are the characteristics and benefits of entrepreneurship characteristics of an entrepreneur first of all that uh, that entrepreneur must be self-motivated remember it's not a typical employee you don't have your supervisor you no know, not going breathing down on you every day what have you done come and show me your work no you you have almost a free hand you're almost like an independent agent within that, that organization so you need to be self-motivated must be proactive and result-oriented and you know be innovative think creatively think out of the box bring new products new services that will benefit your organization and also enrich your own ex experience entrepreneurs are able to resolve specific issues within the organization like increasing productivity the example of joseph in egypt is one there was a problem in egypt joseph was able to come up with a solution he didn't leave Egypt and go and set up his own kingdom somewhere. No, he came up with a solution to ensure that people did not starve, to ensure that there was food during a period of, fam uh, of famine. So you too, as an entrepreneur, provides answers, solutions to specific issues, increasing productivity, cutting costs, come up with creative ideas to address the problems that your organization may be facing. While an entrepreneur is looking for business opportunities everywhere or you know, areas that he can solve a problem everywhere, an entrepreneur is looking for areas where he can solve internal problems, problems that are internal to that organization. An entrepreneur takes limited risk because he's not the one providing the capital, he's not the one doing all the hiring. But even within that uh, organization, he's taking some risk in putting some ideas forward, some creative ideas, some disruptive ideas even, he's putting them forward and because of the, hopefully the goodwill he has built within, with management, they support him in taking those risks, they support him because they see results, you know, profitability is increasing, the market share is increasing, everybody's going to support him with that. An entrepreneur is comfortable with what we now call VUCA. VUCA means volatility, V-U-C-A, volatility, uncertainty, complexity, ambiguity. An entrepreneur must be able to operate and function even in an area where there's a lot of ambiguity. He's able to operate in a volatile environment. He's able to operate in an uncertain environment. He's able to operate within complexity. 
So he's comfortable being uncomfortable because you're going to need that skill in when you go outside as an entrepreneur. The world out there is a VUCA world as we, as we see right now. Things are changing rapidly. There's a lot of uncertainty. What is trending today may not trend tomorrow. You don't have clear definition. Things are still a bit ambiguous, yet you've got to operate within that ambiguity and make meaning and provide solutions that people want. People want to pay for solutions, even with that period of activity or of uncertainty. An entrepreneur, just like an entrepreneur, must be able to predict market trends. You see where the market is going and you are able to predict it and key into it, provide solutions, do things within your your sphere of influence in that organization to tap into those market trends so that your company can benefit from those trends. Remember, the entrepreneur is focused on the problems, fixing the problems within that organization. An entrepreneur is outside that and is just looking everywhere for a place to uh, key in his own solution. An entrepreneur, especially a Christian entrepreneur, must conduct himself or herself in a very, very ethical manner. Remember, you are still an employee. Yes, a highly valued employee, an employee that has been given a lot of free hand, you must still conduct yourself ethically. Don't misuse company's resources. Don't use them for your side business that the company doesn't know about. You must conduct yourself in a very, very ethical manner. Put your personal emotions and personal dreams aside. Yes, you, you have a dream someday of setting up on your own. Don't use company resources for that. Don't start stealing from the company. Don't start stealing resources. Don't start stealing clients from your company. No, that's unethical. So an, entrep an entrepreneur, Christian entrepreneur, must behave in a very, very ethical manner. And an entrepreneur encourages others encourages others within the organization to go along with his dream he's able to present his ideas to management to colleagues and have them buy in to that idea that he's presenting and finally an entrepreneur is a constant learner because you're not you're not just sitting there rotting waiting for the clock five o'clock and then you close no you're constantly learning constantly innovating constantly thinking and constantly you know evolve in thinking of ways to move your organization your company to move your company forward given the 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 area of responsibility that has been assigned to you you that area that department that unit that division that project you want to make it best in class so you're constantly learning and innovating so those are some of the characteristics of an entrepreneur so what are the benefits of entrepreneurship what are the benefits of entrepreneurship? First of all, it's an entrepreneurship creates an entrepreneurial environment. Many organizations deliberately create that. They, it's a big organization, let's say Ford Motors, out of you know, just as an example, not that they they send in something specific there. It's a big organization. There are processes for doing things, but because they want to constantly innovate, they'll create a unit and give that unit free hand so there will be entrepreneurs within that bigger entrepreneur uh, that bigger organization so um, entrepreneurship creates an entrepreneurship mindset and environment it allows employees to try out their ideas and many companies are already doing that i don't know how many people um, have had the opportunity of watching the movie the internship uh, it, Two people uh, played by um, Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn. They applied to Google as interns. They were fairly, they were not the usual, regular, you know, teenager or early teens. They were fairly a little older than the uh, average intern. But they went in there and the environment portrayed in that movie was a kind of, the, the setup was so that it wasn't the usual uh, desk and chair that people come in and sit in a cubicle from morning to night. It was playful almost. You know, it was like being, it looked like a gym, it looked like uh, you have bean bags, you have colorful things. And all that is to stimulate creativity, to not make people feel uh, bogged down or locked into a box. And it stimulates um, creativity. Some of these companies in real life, I mean, the movie is a movie, but it's close from what we heard. It's close to what obtains in these companies that are making with the Googles, the Apples. The employees are not regular, stiff, um, shirt and tie, suit and tie kind of people. 
they, 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 are, they are free to express themselves. The environment is conducive. They may have a team building session or a thinking session at a beach. They are, they, the company deliberately creates that environment to enable employees think creatively, to, to stimulate their creative juices. So a lot of companies create that uh, entrepreneurial mindset within the organization and that's where entrepreneurs come in. They create an entrepreneurial environment by allowing employees to use those entrepreneurial skills to benefit the organization and, of course, benefit themselves. Entrepreneurs use companies' resources while entrepreneurs use their own. The, the company that allows entrepreneurship gives the employees the freedom to experiment. Failure is not a big deal. Because, you know, like, um, was it the man who discovered the light bulbs? You know, after the 1,000 or 10, said, well, I've learned uh, 9,999 ways how, how not to do this. So failure is just another lesson. Remember, the entrepreneur is constantly lesson, uh, learning. So they, 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 they give employees the freedom to experiment and they have potential for growth within the organization. They're not chastised because an idea fails. It's just one way not to do it. And then they took it and go at it again. So many organizations, I don't know how many in our environment, but you know the big companies that we're hearing about now, the Facebooks, the Alphabet company, the parent company of Google, Apple, you know, uh, Tesla, they deliberately create this entrepreneurial environment within the organization. So that employees can express themselves. They have a bit of autonomy and independence and the, while they're looking for solutions they're not bogged down by hierarchical reporting, they're not bogged down by you know having to fill forms and do all kinds of things that could you know bring uh, uh, reduce creativity. So they, the employees have the benefit the opportunity to express themselves to make suggestions not all the suggestions will fly but there's freedom to think freedom to experiment freedom to tweak things and come up with better solutions and the better solutions ultimately will benefit the organization as well as the intrapreneur so it's important for big organizations employers to recognize that there are some employees within your within your organization who can help you, you know, change or transform your business. But they need to be given the freedom to move. Treat them like entrepreneurs, but who are within, so they become entrepreneurs. Allow them some room to maneuver so that they can uh, birth new ideas for your company. Employees who encourage entrepreneurial spirit within the organization stand to benefit. Again, we're talking about these companies. How are they this big? You know, just churning out new products, iPhone, iPad, i iWatch, and whatever. Why are they doing that? Because they have employees that are constantly coming up with new ideas, new products. The employ the company grows, the employees themselves grow. They benefit the from the experience. And when and if they decide to leave, they have that learning that they can take to go set up their own business as entrepreneurs so having entrepreneurship within an organization can lead to innovation and can also lead to growth companies who don't promote who don't encourage entrepreneurship are likely to just decline and maybe eventually fade off the face of the earth because the employee that you cage they didn't allow to express himself or herself they one day go out Put those ideas that he tried to sell to you, he tried to pitch to you, put those ideas to use for himself, start a new company on, on, on his own. And before you know it, that employee is a competitor, he's competing against you. Whereas that right, that knowledge, that new product would have benefited the organization, would have been yours to, um, to, to, to manage. So that's in summary what um, the characteristics and benefits of intra intrapreneurship. It's a stepping stone towards entrepreneurship and it's uh, advised, it's advisable that many people, while you still don't have the resources, you don't have all the factors of production, start as an entrepreneur within your organization. Go and pitch your ideas to your manager, go and pitch your ideas to your leaders and you know, 
make sure that you do something worthwhile with that trust, that independence, that autonomy that they've given you. Bring something worthwhile. If it benefits the organization, if it increases their growth and their brand, they are going to support you. And you two are going to learn so that when you're ready to fully go out and be on your own and be an entrepreneur, you already have all the skills, all the experience to do it. And you also know the failures that you encounter so that you can avoid those um, pitfalls in future. In summary, what we have said today is that an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur within an organization who is proactive and result oriented, working for the benefit of both the organization and himself. Entrepreneurship is one step towards entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurs can use what they have learned in the past as part of an organization to create their own company and to benefit the hard work that they have put in in the past. We just saw the example of Jacob. The, 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 all the hard work he did for labor and paid off because later we found that his own uh, animals, his, go, his own flock grew much bigger than even the flock of labor. He was, he was so rich that he was able to go, up, go off on his own and become a very, very great man. He was greater than his father Isaac. Isaac was greater than Abraham. If Jacob hadn't taken time to learn from Laban, he probably would not have gotten that far. I pray that we'll all pay attention to that as we begin our entrepreneurial journey through entrepreneurial entrepreneurship. God bless you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this lesson. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we start our entrepreneurial journey, you'll help us to do this in an ethical manner, in a way that brings glory to your name. And as we go on, O oh Lord, let our labor be rewarded. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen.